Well, the Lord certainly has a flair for getting people's attention. And that is definitely the case in our second reading, the letter to the Hebrews. So if you were paying attention, now it's going to pay off. We are reminded in that reading how on three different occasions God gets Abraham's undivided attention. First, the Lord tells a 75-year-old Abram, not Abraham yet, Abram, 75 years old, God tells him to pack up everything and go to a place he knows not. No forwarding address. Second, we are reminded how Abraham fathered a son at the age of 99. And his wife, who conceived and gave birth, was 90. That doesn't happen every day. <laughs> Finally, we are reminded how God told Abraham to sacrifice his son, whom he loved. On three separate occasions, God got Abraham's attention and gave him specific instructions. And each time, Abraham complied and said yes. How? By faith. We heard that three times in that reading as well that John proclaimed. By faith, Abraham obeyed when God said, pack up and go. By faith, he received power to generate even though past the normal age. By faith, when tested by God, he offered up Isaac. By faith. Well, today we celebrate the feast of the Holy Family. Jesus, Mary, Joseph. And they too, on many occasions, had the Lord get their undivided attention. Joseph, in his dreams, visited by an angel on more than one occasion with very specific instructions. Do not be afraid. Take Mary as your wife. A little later on, take Mary and the child and flee to Egypt. Herod's coming after you. A little later still, take Mary and the child and go back. Herod is dead. Now, we know Mary was visited by an angel with astounding news. Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. Yes, I know you're a virgin, but you are going to conceive and bear a son. And here we are. How? By faith. By faith. I think it's safe to say in the year 2020, the Lord has gotten our attention. A year ago, I don't think many of us could have predicted the toll and the effect that the impending pandemic would have on all of us. Not to mention all the social unrest and the things that we have dealt with this past year. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> some puppets and commentators, and even theologians might say that there's a message in this, in all that we're going through. It's the end of the world. God is bad at us. We need to repent. Well, what I think the upshot is in all of this is that it is a great opportunity for us to embrace and grow in our faith. Faith is very important to us, isn't it? It's also very important to God. I'm going to borrow something that Father Tom has told us before, but he got it from St. Peter, so I think it's okay to share. This is from the first letter of St. Peter. 
This is what God thinks about our faith. And it really speaks to us in the times that we're in. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Faith, more precious than gold. And yet sometimes, so difficult. So difficult. Sometimes we can say, well, of course Abraham did what God told him to do. He was Abraham. Of course Joseph and Mary stepped up. They were Joseph and Mary. But remember this. None of them had to say yes. Every one of them could have said no. Even Jesus, in his moment in the garden, Father, is it possible for this cup to pass before me? Not my will, but your will. What do we say when God gets our attention? You see, it's one thing to claim to have faith. It's another thing entirely to live like you had faith. I remember a time my beloved mother was going through a crisis, and we sat her down and we said, Ma, you just got to have faith. got to have faith, Ma. And this little Italian woman, about four foot ten, stood up, put her hands on her hips, and very indignantly said, I do have faith. <laughs> Back away from the little Italian woman. <laughs> I can't speak to Ma's heart, but it sure seemed to us on the outside. She lived her life in constant fear and worry and anxiety, and that's very sad. You see, the Lord gives us what we need to get through our trials, and not just by the skin of our teeth, but to actually thrive in the face of trials. And don't be fooled. Other people see how we react as followers of Jesus to trials. And it should be different than how the rest of the world is acting around us. This is a golden opportunity for us to be witnesses to the power and the mercy and the peace of the living God. And we have no idea what kind of effect that can have on people. At a particular moment, at a particular time, how we react in the face of a trial just might touch somebody and be exactly what they need in that moment. They can change their lives. So, how do we make this connection from claiming faith to proclaiming faith? Well, first, we need to realize that nothing is impossible for God. Nothing. Look at Abraham. Look at Joseph. Look at Mary. Look at Jesus himself and all that he did. Nothing is impossible for God. And we can ask the Holy Spirit to open the eyes of our heart so that we can gaze upon the face of love in the manger, on the cross, in our lives. And when we do that, love in action will flow out. And when that happens, other people will see and be attracted to it, and they will want what we have. We have made it almost to the end of 2020. How? By faith. 
Let's charge into 2021, following the Lord, trusting in the Lord, living, loving, doing, and bringing the kingdom of God to earth. How? By faith. And not just claiming it. Proclaim.